And so, <clears throat> I think also that the part of the unity of the church in North America is essential because other people then in other churches will see us as the Church of Christ. Some time ago I was in Cleveland, Ohio on the Sunday of Orthodoxy. And uh, Cleveland, our church in Cleveland, it's quite large and there were a number of people there and afterwards, you know, we have the Lenten desserts which are almost sinful. <laughs> you know. Just, you almost can't wait until the speaker's over so you can take a little bit of everything, you know. And, um, and uh, I saw two men there with collars but they had tweed coats on. I said, uh-oh. I said, I hope they don't come to speak to me. I'm thinking this. And sure enough, they came right toward me. They said, uh, your grace, your, your whatever they said, your evidence, I don't know. Uh, but we are two Lutheran pastors, and we want to become Orthodox. Oh, I said, that's wonderful. <laughs> and then they said, uh, but we don't know which one to become. <laughs> because you see, the conception of the church in North America is Serbian Orthodox, our church, Serbian church, has nothing to do with the Greek church, or the Bulgarian church, or the Antiochian church. Well, all, all these different churches, you know, kind of like a gumball machine, you know, where all different colors there, and, but they don't realize we're all gumballs. We <laughs> don't have the same taste, you know. <laughs> so I think it's, it's, uh, it's incumbent on us that we say that we have the true faith. We have seen the true light. We have found the true faith. Let us worship the Holy and Undivided Trinity. But we're, we're called on that in our day, not just to resolve it, but to be a witness to others who want to come into the church. So they don't have to say, do I have to become a Romanian? Or do I have to become a, a Greek? That's what they said. Put aside the Greek, my Greek is Greek wedding. And he said, now I'm a Greek. You know, when he was baptized, now I'm a Greek. <laughs> Only the Greeks have seen that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> or seen it more than once, anyway. <laughs> and, so the, and so we need also to understand, and maybe I'm not on Olympia, but ecumenism, we need to consider how do we associate with Christians who believe in Christ and how can we come to a unity of those Christians, Trinitarian Christians, sacramental Christians, to stand against the tremendous tsunami of unbelief in this nation and the pressures of Islam in North America and worldwide because if we can't represent Christ, the historical and the real Christ, and worship Him in the true way, and part of the true worship is, is good structure, as the Father said, and this is what was, a, was said by the Fathers at the Council of Nicaea, except they were not speaking about this confusion that we have, they're speaking of territories. Bishop in, in this city, because it was in this territory, so I believe it's incumbent on us to work hard, to pray hard, and do take this little prayer home with you and, 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 and ask God, recite it every morning. That's, God listens to us if we talk. If we just wring our hands, nothing happens. And so I think it's very uh, much part of our daily life. If we really are good Christians, we want the church to grow because we want others to know the message of Christ, then we have to pray. And prayer means talking with God. Just saying, Lord, we're not sure what this is, when it's going to happen. We know it's happening, and we're, th we're, we're grateful for what you've given us to this point, but give us a little bit more. Give us a little bit more. And so, um, that's my, that, those are some of my observations. It says here, reflections for the actions of the actions of the assembly of bishops. And I, I think, again, because I was at uh, uh, Ligonier, and we had two wonderful documents. One of the documents had to do with the nature of the church, and the other one had to do with the pastoral uh, uh, outreach of the church. And exactly those issues that we discussed in Ligonier are applicable, to, applicable today. 
So if you look on this website, I think it's on our our own the OCL website, yeah. I believe. So look for that. There's even a little film there with Archbishop Jacobos, uh, Metropolitan Christopher, um, Metropolitan uh, Theodor Theodosius, and others speakers saying what they saw to be the unity of the church in North America, and that was in 1994. And those hold as well today. So um, those aspects of the church have not changed the need of the church, that our need, which is to have our children to grow in the church, to, to recognize mixed marriages that the, the party needs to understand what it is. Last night I had a Vespers at our church in um, Hayward, and I said to the priest father, I know this is a very ethnic parish. I know that you use Romanian, but maybe tonight we could use English. And I said, because if we could use Chinese. For those who don't understand Romanian, if you use Chinese or, or um, I don't know, Russian or German, they wouldn't understand. So that's the issue in the churches if we're going to reach out. And that's, I think, the, the real role of the Assembly of Bishops is that the goal is to have a, an autocephalous church with its own synod of bishops, with, uh, with the, the, um, the territory of the United States and Canada separate, uh, precisely for not the goal of holding on to what we have, but making it grow and reaching out to others. So I, um, I hope that those are some of the reflections that I have on the actions of the Assembly of Bishops. It's also true that we love one another, um, the bishops are respectful of one another. Um, we do have microphones, uh, we share microphones, and you put, push a little button and it lights up and, and the, the secretariat recognizes us or not. No, they do, but they, <laughs> maybe not always when we want to, you know. But, but um, it's a, and, and we commemorate, uh, um, rather um, thank His Eminence Archbishop uh, Dimitrios because he keeps a, he, he keeps a very level um, um, state in the assembly of bishops. When you have 66 bishops, or even 45 in a room, uh, each one of us has maybe a different um, uh, perspective. And so uh, as, a, as a chairman, he's done a, a wonderful thing of, of doing this. For example, I sit uh, next to the bishop the Albanian bishop, I'm sorry, the Bulgarian bishop, Daniel, who was one of the bishops who uh, read, uh, he said to the archbishop, I have, a, I have a statement to read. Okay, the archbishop said, go ahead. So he, he started to read and it was about three pages into the, into the letter and then the, finally his eminence said, your grace, can you go to the last paragraph and tell us what it's all about? <laughs> And what it was about was exactly as was stated. Some churches now say, we don't want any change. We like the status quo. The Bulgarian church, he said there are 500,000 new Bulgarians in North America. We have to take care of them. The Moscow Patriarchate and the Roper said, we have all the Russian influence. We have to take care of them. Now, I can't contradict numbers, and I can't contradict the fact that there are new immigrations. I have a new immigration among the Romanian community, too. However, however, we've been taking care of them for 100 years. The OCA for 200 years. The Greek Archdiocese for 100 and some years. So if we've been able to take care of those people all that time, what, 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 what difficulty is us for to continue to do the same thing for years to come? All we need to do is say, instead of having you ask us what's happening, just let us be together as a synod, as a local church, and you'll know what's happening and we'll take care of them. So it's very essential that we work toward the goal of an autocephalous church with one synod, and we'll resolve our own problems, whatever they might be. And the second part of this presentation that I was given was the prospects for the unity of Orthodox jurisdictions in America. My name is Phil Drummond. <laughs> doesn't bother me, I'm still here and I'm still going to talk. <laughs> so the prospects of unity are wonderful. 
We haven't had the cooperation before as we have today. Those, uh, there were some bishops there whom I was really pleased as well to see uh, an openness that hadn't been there before, perhaps because they said all of a sudden, uh oh, we thought we're moving forward and now some of the churches are reticent. So it is good, as uh, the proto-deacon said, that we know that some other churches say we're concerned about this. Okay, it's things for us to discuss. So as far as the prospect for the unity of the church in North America, of course, first of all, because the patriarchates have said something, needs to be done according to good order in the church. Second, because we are ourselves want to have this, and even though some may not want to have it right now, it's because the process has not been to clarify what those, what those concerns are. So the prospects are in God's good time, in God's good time, and to be patient, and also to be obedient. Because we're not we don't break away from other churches. We don't, um, we don't um, reject the entire church. We, we, we have to re re remind ourselves that the church is one. We say one holy Catholic apostolic church, one church. So although there are patriarchates out there, the church is one. And all that church out there says, oops, when in this we've got a little bit of indigestion. It's called the Aspera, or so-called the Aspera. We need to resolve that. So it is moving forward. And there has been made, uh, uh, great progress made in the fact of coming together uh, every year. And a great progress because we already know this year that we're going to meet next year. Uh, not where, but that's not essential. Just so we can put it on our calendars. And so, dearly beloved, um, it's kind of like a sermon, I guess, but that's how I see it. The reflection on the bishops um, and the prospect of Orthodox unity, jurisdictional unity in North America. So um, I look forward to uh, having uh, Mr. Nemi present with us in a couple of years. This is how it happened. <laughs> Can we do that? <laughs>
how can they lift your spirits on this particular issue? You told them exactly their concerns for his health and freedom of religion and so forth. So there are many organizations out there that are working to at least at least to understand one another and what Islam is and what it is what is Judaism and what is Christianity and what it is because it's all it's all very clear it comes down to what our Lord said who do you say I am we say he's the son of God saved by the world the second person of the Holy Trinity there are those who say he's a, treat a teacher and those who say other things so that's the reality of the world. Politics aside, politics aside, economics aside, comes down to this historic reality. Who is Jesus Christ in time? And if we as Orthodox Christians live a life that's reflective of this. Um, recently the new Pope, uh, uh, Todorus, I think, is, uh, said when they were burning churches and even killing people, he said, um, Churches can be rebuilt, and the church has always had martyrs. And that's, for us Americans, that's rather, you know, we want to. So I think though that's, that's, the, that's the issue. We reap what we sow. And if the faith is not strong in some countries, perhaps it's because their faith isn't strong. Um, as far as other areas, and, and I won't go into those matters, but yes, in unity their strength. And if the church is unified in North America, instead of Archbishop Demetrios or Metropolitan Tikhon or, or um, Metropolitan, um, I don't know, Sotirios going to the White House for a dinner as the Greek or the OCA or the Serbian bishop or whatever, he represents all of the Orthodox in North America. And so it is essential also on that ground because the church does not live in a bubble. We live in society. And we know also that the churches abroad, they have a relationship with governments that we don't have and never will have because of the numbers of people. I mean, you have churches with millions of, millions of faithful. So naturally, the government says, what's your opinion? Or how can we do this together? Or because that's, that's the influence of it. So yes, unity is also not just fulfilling the gospel but it's also, um, it's also beneficial to society uh, because we're the, we're the caretakers of society. We transfigure society. Yes, ma'am? Just a question, Mark. When, in talking about having um, an autocephalous church in America, I mean, I can understand what you're saying. How many of the, I guess, patriarchates um, are financed and helped to be financed by the churches that they that represent them here in America. And how many of them would have difficulties? For instance, I know Constantinople would find it very difficult not to have the support of the American churches, of the Greek Orthodox churches. And I don't know about some of the others, how they're supported um, through us, through the United States, through their representatives. Is that something that, even though you're autocephalous, you still help the patriarchates? Well, I think first, I don't know. I don't have those figures. But I would assume that nobody has helped. Uh, the Serbian church, I don't think, is helped by the Serbian dioceses here, nor the Romanians, nor others. Constantinople is a unique thing because Constantinople, the, the church in North America, is under its jurisdiction. So yes, the North American Archdiocese helps to support, and I believe they, there's support also from other areas. There's nothing to keep a local church from giving love money to the Patriarchate of Constantinople. Um, in fact, if you have five children, or 15, 14 children, giving something, it's more than having one child, right? So if now the Archdiocese, and, and I can't say that that's going to happen, but they do say giving is part of a church, of a local church. Charity is part of it, sustaining others. So if the Patriarchate of Constantinople is in need of support as much as could be done, 
I say that because maybe there's government problems too. I don't know all of those aspects of it. But I don't think that's a, that should be a problem. I don't think that should be a problem to say, will an American church support the patriarchate of Constantinople? I don't think that would be a problem, financially and otherwise. Because we're one church. Yeah, we can't see it as anything else. Are you writing a check? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions?